Yes, I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going through some of the comments. And Terry Vanna points out when I when I was talking about Jonathan Gullis, Jonathan Gullis may have been <laughs> may, may not have been called for an interview because his public persona was so unpleasant. But uh, Terry Vanna says you missed the most obvious reason why Gullis uh, cannot get a teaching job. Isn't it too late to apply for a teaching job uh, in July when term starts in September? If he tries again at a later date, he might have better luck. Although having to listen to him for the last five years, I can't imagine how any pupil could possibly have any respect for him. Absolutely. In every in every single way. You know, it's it's too late to apply for a job. The only jobs he's likely to get are those that um, uh, where, where, where schools are desperate. He might, for example, uh, very easily find a, a teaching supply job. And that might keep him busy for a short while. I don't know what his qualifications are. Um, but I, I, I would imagine he would be a, a great asset in a teaching supply firm. Um, and I can't imagine they would turn him down. But uh, it, it may well be that he's looking for, for very specific employment. And, 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 and he may be very selective in the sort of things that he's looking for. But you're quite right. He's trying... A little bit too, um, a little bit too late. He's 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 t he's turning up too late. Um, and uh, uh, Thomas Purdy says, Mister Gullis was notorious as an MP for his outspoken views, which often sparked controversy. He once said, anyone using the term white privilege should be reported to the Home Office as an extremist. He isn't after a job. He's after. Uh, um, GB News freebies, in my honest opinion. Uh, and uh, Thomas has also said, Mr. Gullis also said the foreign aid budget should not exist at all. Attacked Church of England bishops for preaching about refugees and said Nigel Farage should be the Home Secretary. <laughs> well, you know, there's, there's there's good reason why perhaps uh, Mr. Gullis may have been overlooked. Uh, maybe people were surprised uh, that... Um, uh, that, that, that his name was even on the on the application forms, um, and uh, uh, history teaches us, says JJ. History teaches us that appeasing dictators does not secure peace. It emboldens them and their allies. Um, well, absol absolutely. Absolutely, we we need we need to be very careful about the way that we deal with Mr. Putin and with the and with the um, uh, Kremlin Kremlin aggression. Um, so this is this is very much about the about the Munich Agreement. Um, the concessions made over the Sudetenland didn't prevent war. They merely delayed it and even uh, and, and led to an even greater devastation. The lesson is clear. Peace negotiations that demand concessions are not peace negotiations at all, but a dangerous gamble that encourages further aggression. I want to congratulate you for recognizing the importance of holding firm against dictators. It's only through strength and resolve that lasting peace can be achieved. It's also, uh, I, I, would, I would add, JJ, through talking, that lasting peace can be achieved. And while Zelensky and Putin cannot get in the same room together because they are in war against each other, even though Putin calls it a special military operation, uh, the, the, the level of support and discontent across Russia is growing. And um, Kalen Robertson, who's been in Odessa uh, and, and Kherson, has said that... Um, has, has said to me this morning that a uh, the, the marketplace in Kherson that he was filming only a couple of days ago has now been struck by a missile, and I think seven people are confirmed to have died. Uh, Kherson is um, a place that is technically in Ukrainian control, but the Russians across the Dnieper River are sending drones and missiles. To attack anything that moves. This isn't a, this isn't a war that's attacking military objectives. This is a war. The Russian side is 
specifically attacking civilians and has done so since the very beginning. It can start off by saying this is uh, th th this is munitions that um, the, the, the misfired or they hit the wrong target. So sorry, we hit a school rather than um, a, um, a an army dump. But, um, but but the consistent practice of hitting civilian targets uh, is now is now f very firmly established. This is what Russia does. It, it's evil. It's wrong. And it's been doing this since the very beginning of the war. Uh, and indeed, before the war. This is something that it was fermenting in the Donbass from 2013. Through these irregular um, paramilitaries, like the, the most famous of which is the Wagner Brigade. And, uh, and then it, is, it, it has continued this with ghosting and gaslighting, partly for its domestic audience and partly for the international audience. And we are too arrogant to, 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 to think that, um, uh, that, we, that we, we aren't um, influenced by this propaganda. It's not, for, it's not primarily for us, it's for the domestic audience in Russia to justify this appalling war. And the, the, the Ukrainians aren't the Nazis, it's the it's the Wagner Brigade, which was named after the Nazi composer, the, the favorite composer of Adolf Hitler. It's the Wagner Brigade, which had the Nazi insignia. Uh, this is gaslighting, accusing somebody else of exactly the criminal activity that, that Russia itself has been engaging in. So... It's right to call this up, but at the same time, because we have imposed sanctions, which I think were the wrong thing to do, by the way, but because we have imposed sanctions, we should be in a position to engage in debate with the Kremlin and to, um, and to negotiate whether to increase those sanctions or to reduce them. And we should, be, we should be doing this quite openly. We should be doing it as an example of the sort of negotiations that could be uh, taking place between Zelensky and Putin, or indeed the um, representatives of Zelensky and Putin. We should be doing this partly uh, for the example, uh, des autres, um, but, the, but we should also be doing it for practical relief um, in both Ukraine and in Russia, because ordinary Russians never signed up for this. Uh, I know that um, there is a network of ordinary Russians who are who are doing their very best to promote the Ukrainian cause without getting caught, and they are working so valiantly. Uh, I'm I, I'm terribly proud of the work that they are doing behind the scenes, um, but we should be supporting them, and and in the West we should be helping with their effort to get the real message across to the huge way, uh, the, the the huge um, wealth of land that exists beyond Moscow, that is this huge country where the majority of people do not read newspapers, do not read books. They simply switch the radio on, the, the television on, and they listen to the garbage promoted by uh, Zainalova and the, 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 the media representatives of the Kremlin. They are bombarded with propaganda every single minute of the day not just in the news programs, but also in the entertainment programs. And we have a very um, mature media in the West, in Britain particularly, and we should be producing programs that can be farmed out to Russian television. We should be playing our role in trying to modify the uh, and, and um, nullify the the message of hate which is being put across.
and we're not doing that. We think that message is for us. It's so arrogant, so stupid, so short-sighted. Thankfully, you know, we didn't do this during the Second World War. We had the clear, the clarity of sight to to be working on propaganda, to be working on wireless transmissions that were picked up in Germany and that were designed for the German domestic audience. And we should be doing the same thing in Russia now, and we're not.